Hello class. Here I am in the saw shop. Missing y'all. We all could be in here getting our saws ready, but we'll have to do this virtually today. So thought you might like to see this. All right, so we're coming into the saw shop. Here we go. Crew one. There are your saws waiting for you. Crew two. Woohoo! More of crew two and crew three. Just thought you might miss being back at school. All your chaps hanging, waiting for you. All right, so first I'd like to talk about wedges. I've got some reading in this book. Hopefully you have that. If not, I will try to reproduce it. We're on chapter three, felling difficult trees. Where to put that wedge? All right, where to put that wedge? Other felling aids. Talk about wedging, leaning trees, segments, and determining whether you can tip them over or not when you fell. The other reading is in your notebook in the yellow tab. The SFI section. Page 15. So I've got back cut, forward lean, side lean, where to put your wedges and segments. All right, wedges. When do you use a wedge? That's a question. When do you use a wedge? So there's many different types of wedges. These are all what are called single wedge. They're a double wedge, so it's got two angles. So this is flat on one side and sloped on the other. The longer the wedge, the more lifting capability. So that's your lifting or your mechanical advantage. They're easier to pound in when they're longer. This is a 12 inch, here's some 10 inch. This is a eight inch wedge and then there's a five and a half. Each is an inch, and you'll get the same amount of lift, but it's just harder to drive in because it's a steeper slope. I like the uh, 12 inch wedges. I've had these for probably 10 years. They, these are the steel, they last for quite a long time. Different textures. I don't like the triple wedge, because that one has, starts here and then flares up like this. So you get uh, twice the lift, really. So we've got different textures on the wedge. This is a good texture right here, so it doesn't, they don't slip, because you can stack these. These I don't like quite as much. They have the teeth on them. It will keep the wedge from slipping back out of the tray, but it's hard to, Stack. The longer wedge, even though it's easier to drive, the issue is that you could drive it into the back of your hinge. And I'll show you that next. Uh, a couple things about wedges. Uh, if you don't want to go to your authorized dealer every week because you've got wedges that have these flares out here, this folded material. You can just use a rasp and file those off. So you don't want to have these chunks fly. Always when you use wedges, you should have safety glasses and have that screen down. Because if a piece does flake off, that could, that could hurt. Alright, so we use wedges. 
they, I would say the question before was when to use wedges. I would say always, unless you have a really hard forward leaning tree. Why not just, if you pinch your bar in here, it's very difficult to get a wedge in if the tree is sat back. So I would just say, as you're making your cut, you're gonna wedge into the back of the tree. I know Kevin had talked about, then when you make your hinge, you can come into the, on the bad side of the tree if it's leaning. And actually, another good thing, once you've pounded this in, either with a hammer, works nicely, or a lighter ax, so you wanna get a good angle at it, tapping that in. So once you've loosened that up, you can stack them in like this and just alternate hitting. Be all the way to... You're on. One thing I mentioned was the longer wedge, easier to lift the tree, but you have the danger of driving into the back of your hinge right here. So this one is just 12 inches, so that would work. So on the back side, pair them up and take turns. And you don't have to beat till you're out of, so you're just gonna tap, tap, and keep getting left. If you slide the wedge around further to the side of the tray, you're gonna get more lift. It's harder to drive it in, but you're gonna get more lift on out of that wedge. These are all one inch thick. Okay. So for those of you who have the book, How to Fell a Tree, page 74 has this kind of crazy formula. Your crown displacement is CD, that's in inches. So we're trying to determine how much you can move the crown of the tray. So it's either, a, a, say, a back-leaning tray. Up till now, the trees that you falled, felled have been, I tried to pick out the front forward-leaning trees and we went with the lean of the tray when you fell them at, at uh, King's Gap. So the crown displacement is the wedge lift that's one inch times the height of the tree in inches, and then that's divided by the diameter in inches. And this is to the front of the hinge, which I'll show you in a moment. What I like to do is just simplify this a little bit. If those who are good in algebra, we've got one inch as our wedge lift h times one, let's just divide the height of the tree by the diameter, and that's your number of what are called segments. So we'll just use height of the tree in feet, and we'll do the diameter of the trunk in feet as well to easily get our segments. Good. I'm back, and I'd like to talk to you next about segments. Segments in a tree. We looked at that formula. Segments are how many blocks are in the tree. And those blocks are the diameter of the tree. So we'll start with the tree diameter outside bark. This is about 15 inches. But we're gonna be cutting into the tree. There's a hinge. And we've taken a notch out of the front of the tree and then we're gonna have holding one, the hinge. So really, that part of the tree has been removed. Now we need to know what is the distance from the back of the tree here to the front of the hinge. That is our segment. So you have to almost estimate this. Think of you know 80% is your width. How deep are you going to go into that tree? So I'm going to measure the segment. So I'm going to the front of the hinge, to the back of the tree, and that's close enough to 12 inches. So that's a nice, easy math. We're gonna say there's a 12 inch segment. This is one segment. So 12 inches from the back of the tree to the front of the hinge. That segment, that's a 12 inch segment in that tree. 
So now, if we have a 12 inch segment, however high the tree is in feet, height, say 70 feet, divided by 12, that or one foot gives you 70 segments. So segments, the segment is how many blocks are in the tree from the front of the hinge to the back of the tree. In this case, it's 12, that's one foot. So if the tree is 70 feet, that's your H, divided by one is the diameter, then you have 70 segments in the tree. So let's stack up some segments. So this has one segment in it. Here's a second segment. A third segment. These buckets are all about 12 inches or one foot. And a third segment. So three on top of this, so we now have four segments. So when I, when a wedge is driven in the back of the tray, if I have a one inch wedge and a one segment, it lifts the one segment one inch. If I have two segments and I put that same wedge in, how many inches does it move the second segment? How many segments with three and one inch of lift, how much does it tip that third segment? And then the fourth segment, and then all the way up to 70 segments. So if I have one inch of lift, and I'm gonna take these segments off. Again, drive the wedge in, one inch, one inch. Let's now move that two inches, three inches, and four inches. So for, and you can see that right here. So for every segment in the tray, it moves it. If it's a 12 inch segment or a one foot segment, one inch lift moves it one inch. So that tray, the crown displacement is now, if it's a 70 foot tree, I can move that almost 70 inches, except for the saw curve. So that would be your maximum. So you're looking at a six foot, almost a six foot back lean, taking that tree, straightening it up. And that's where you might need to start stacking wedges. In this case, I have a leaning tree you're going to do a bore cut, so bore cutting in the tree. I'm going to leave a strap over on this side to hold it. So you, all the way through, the bar comes up to your hinge, and then you're going to stop. I'm going to put a wedge in on the bad side of the tree. I could also put one, in, actually put one in the back first and then I could put one here. And it come out and as I'm lifting, so if I have to do actually more lift, I could start uh, stacking these wedges. So this wedge I would stack as a 90. This one can come out, and now I'm pounding this in and this in, and I can get up to two inches of lift. I've seen uh, Soren Erickson do stack three of them, and you stack them with a 90. You have to make sure the wedge isn't going to drive into the back of the hinge. This is a shorter. Okay. I just noticed this is a single taper wedge, flat on the bottom and tapered on the top. And I didn't notice that it says double taper on this one. To me, it looks like a single taper, but it's a, got a double taper. 
So I like the double taper wedges.